To track down the origin of the Honey Guide story, I spoke with nutritional anthropologist Alyssa Crittenden at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, who made a remarkable discovery about the Hadza people of Tanzania, a group still living a traditional hunting and gathering lifestyle in the very landscape where our species is thought to have evolved. The Hadza are honey hunters, and they do follow honey guides. This has been known for decades. But Alyssa was the first person to ask a basic question. How much honey do the Hadza eat? And the answer was surprising. Honey wasn't just an occasional sweet treat. Men, women, and children all ranked it as their number one favorite fruit, and they looked for it every single day, raiding the nests not just of honeybees, but of at least six other honey-making varieties. Over the course of a year, honey made up fully 15% of the Hadza diet, a figure that was far higher during certain seasons and higher still for many of the men who would not only gather most of the honey out in the field, but eat quite a bit of it before they came back to camp. <laughs> now that is interesting in and of itself, but the idea becomes truly powerful in an evolutionary context. Because Alyssa and her colleagues then posed another question. Would our ancestors, surviving in roughly the same way, in the same landscape, have behaved any differently? After all, chimpanzees eat honey, so why not Homo erectus, Homo habilis, even Australopithecus? If we have been chasing after bees since the very beginning, well, that certainly explains the coevolution of honey guides. They coevolved with us. Why would a bird bother trying to attract the attention of a nocturnal badger when there were big bipedal apes out there in plain sight, scouring the savanna for bee nests all day long. But for Alyssa and her colleagues, the bird is a side note. The real discovery has to do with us, because the story of human evolution has always been a story about brain size. And the brain is what physiologists like to call metabolically expensive. It takes a lot of energy to run it, up to 20% of our daily calories go to feed something that makes up only about 2% of our body weight. So if you want to evolve a bigger brain, then you need more fuel. And as Alyssa told me, honey is the most energy-rich food in nature. And not only that, the energy comes in the form of glucose, or a good portion of it does. It's sugary. And our brains are obligate glucose consumers. If you eat other things, your body will transform those things into glucose to feed your brain. And so here's this wonderful source of it out in the landscape. One more chapter now from, from or one more chapter, one more paragraph. Don't worry, not a whole chapter. <laughs> one paragraph only from chapter six. Like hunting animals, finding honey provided our ancestors with a rich nutritional reward for completing a complex task. It would have created a similar impetus for the development of cooperation and sharing, as well as tool use and the mastery of fire. Hand axes, flakes, and other stone implements did indeed lead to efficiencies in killing and butchering game, but so too would they have allowed access to the larger bee nests hidden in trees. And while fire may have given us a nutritional boost through cooking, it would also have allowed the pacification of honeybees with smoke. If our ancestors did indeed search for honey as regularly as the Hadza do today, then each of these advances would have been accompanied by a huge surge in sugary calories. And as Alyssa reminded me several times during our talk, bee nests also contain larvae and pollen, which provide even more calories as well as protein and important micronutrients. Taken together, these dietary contributions make a strong case that learning to follow bees and honey guides influenced human evolution, helping our ancestors to bolster their growing brains and, in the language of anthropology, nutritionally outcompete other species. Now there is some food for thought. Could it be that our primordial sweet tooth led us to bees and to honey, helping ultimately to make us who we are? What a tantalizing notion. <laughs>